ever lent money to a friend or family member only to realize it was a big mistake? Imagine the scene, you're approached by someone you know, maybe a friend, a relative, or even a co-worker. They flash a winning smile, and with a promise to repay promptly, they ask to borrow some money. You, being the kind-hearted person you are, lend them the money. But then, days turn into weeks, weeks into months, and that promise of repayment seems to drift further and further into the horizon. What started as an act of kindness, soon becomes a burden. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, today, we're taking a deep dive into the world of money lending, particularly the types of borrowers you're likely to encounter and the implications of lending money. We've all heard the saying, neither a borrower nor a lender be, but it's not always that simple, is it? Sometimes we lend out of kindness, sometimes out of obligation, and other times we just get plain manipulated. Among the borrowers you might encounter there's the charming manipulator, a master of persuasion who knows just what to say to get you to open your wallet. Then there's the remorseless borrower who takes your money without a second thought and never seems to remember to pay it back. And let's not forget the guilt tripper who plays on your sense of obligation and makes you feel like the bad guy if you refuse to lend. But lending money isn't just about the borrowers, there are implications for you the lender as well. It can strain relationships, create financial burdens, encourage bad habits, and even erode trust. So what's the solution? Well, instead of lending money, how about offering moral support? Be there to listen, to offer advice, to help explore alternative solutions. Because moral support doesn't drain your wallet, but it can still make a positive impact. So, buckle up as we delve into the various types of borrowers and their tactics. It's time to play the lending game, but this time, you're going to be the one calling the shots. Stick around as we delve into the various types of borrowers and their tactics. First up, we have the charming manipulator, a master of persuasion. Imagine this character, suave, charismatic, and has a way with words. They could sell ice to an Eskimo, as the saying goes. They are the charming manipulator, and they are experts at convincing you to lend them money. How do they do it? It's all in the charm. They present themselves as trustworthy and reliable. They paint a persuasive picture, perhaps of a business venture that's just about to take off, or a temporary setback that they promise to bounce back from in no time. They'll assure you that they'll be able to pay you back promptly, and they'll do it with such conviction that you'll find yourself believing them. However, it's important to remember that promises are not guarantees. A charming manipulator may have no intention of returning your money. They might be counting on their charm to keep you from asking for your money back, and when you do, they're likely to have a whole new set of promises ready, to keep you hoping that you'll see your money again. So, how do you avoid falling for their tricks? First, remember that lending money is a serious decision that should be based on more than just charm and promises. Ask for more concrete proof of their ability to pay you back. If they're reluctant to provide it, that's a red flag. Second, don't let your emotions cloud your judgment. Charm can be disarming, but don't let it distract you from the reality of the situation. If something doesn't feel right, trust your instincts. And finally, Remember that it's okay to say no. You're not obligated to lend money to anyone and you should never feel pressured into doing so. It's better to risk offending someone than to risk losing your hard-earned money. So the next time you encounter a charming manipulator asking for a loan, remember these tips. Don't let their charisma and sweet words fool you. After all, as the saying goes, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Remember, a sweet tongue is not always a sign of a sweet character. Ever met someone who borrows money without a hint of remorse? Let's talk about them. These are the folks who treat your wallet like an all-you-can-eat buffet, with no intention of ever paying you back. They're the masters of the I'll pay you back later promise and they've got the art of forgetting down to a T. It's like they've got this magical ability to erase their debt from their memory. And if you dare to remind them, well, they'll just laugh it off and promise to pay you back soon. But, soon, seems to be a never-ending horizon that keeps stretching further and further into the future. These remorseless borrowers are not just forgetful, they're cunning, they've got a knack for making you feel like the bad guy for asking for your own money back. They might even spin a tale of how they're just on the brink of a big break, and if you could just lend them a little more, they'll be able to pay you back in full. But here's the kicker. That big break never seems to come and you're left not only without your original loan but even deeper in the hole. And just when you think it can't get any worse, they come back, asking for more. It's a never-ending cycle of borrow, forget, borrow again, and the more you lend the more they seem to forget. It's a dangerous game to play my friends. You're not a bank and even if you were, banks don't lend money without expecting repayment. 
So how do you deal with these remorseless borrowers? It's simple. Just say no. You're not being mean. You're being smart. Your financial stability is not a game to be gambled with. Remember, lending money is not a good habit. It can lead to strained relationships, financial burden, and a loss of trust. So next time you're faced with a remorseless borrower, hold on to your wallet. Don't let their lack of remorse drain your bank account. Some borrowers play on your sense of obligation, let's call them the guilt trippers. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is a guilt tripper? Well these are the individuals who firmly believe that it's your duty to help them financially. They're like emotional pickpockets, adept at making you feel like a bad person if you dare to refuse their request for a loan. They might say things like, I thought we were friends, or, you're the only one who can help me out. They're masters of emotional manipulation using your empathy and your desire to be a good person to their advantage, they've turned guilt tripping into an art form, and they use it to extract money from you. So how do you deal with these guilt trippers? The first step is to recognize the tactic. If you feel a pang of guilt when asked for money, take a step back and ask yourself why. Are they making you feel obligated? Are they using emotional language to sway you? If the answer is yes, you might be dealing with a guilt tripper. The second step is to establish boundaries. You are not a bank, and it's not your duty to provide financial support to everyone who asks. It's okay to say no. It's okay to protect your financial well-being. Remember, it's your hard-earned money we're talking about here. The third step is to offer alternatives. If you genuinely want to help, consider offering moral support instead. Help them brainstorm other ways to solve their financial problems. This could be helping them create a budget, suggesting they get a part-time job, or directing them to financial resources and services. Finally, if you're feeling particularly brave, confront the guilt tripper. Let them know that you're aware of their tactics, and you won't be manipulated. It might be uncomfortable but standing up for yourself is an essential part of maintaining healthy relationships and financial well-being. Don't let anyone make you feel guilty for not lending them money. Remember, it's not just about the money, it's about respect, trust and maintaining healthy boundaries. And no one has the right to guilt trip you into compromising those. Now let's talk about why lending money is a bad habit. It might seem like a kind gesture at first, but it can often lead to some not-so-great consequences. For one, it can strain relationships. Money has a way of souring even the closest of friendships or family ties when it's not paid back. It's not just about the cash, it's about the trust that's been broken. Secondly, lending money can become a financial burden. Your generosity might impact your ability to meet your own needs and financial goals. Then there's the issue of repeated patterns. If you lend money without holding people accountable, they can start to see you as an easy source of cash. And finally, there's the loss of trust. When someone takes your money and doesn't return it, it can erode the trust you had in them. Lending money can create more problems than it solves. So, think twice before you open your wallet. Instead of lending money, what can we do? I hear you ask. Well, there's an alternative that doesn't risk your hard-earned cash or precious relationships. That's right folks, it's all about offering moral support. Consider the power of simply being there to listen to someone's financial woes. Offering advice, sharing your own experiences, or helping them explore alternative solutions to their money problems. It's about providing a shoulder to lean on, words of encouragement, and guidance to help them navigate through their financial storm. This kind of support doesn't come with a price tag. It doesn't drain your wallet, nor does it strain your relationships. Yet, it can be incredibly valuable. It can empower people to take control of their financial situations, make better decisions, and ultimately become self-sufficient. So, next time someone asks you for a loan, think twice. Remember, offering moral support can be more valuable than any amount of money.